In this video, we're going to talk about tree structure relations. Uh, last video, we talked about constituents, but I want to take a look more formally at the trees we're going to be drawing, define some terms, and define constituents in terms of these formal trees, rather than just saying they're a group of words that function as a unit. Okay. The very first basic of tree structures are that trees are generated by rules. So I'm going to use the same tree for all the examples on the right. So we have A at the top, then it goes to B and C, B goes to D, E, and F, C goes to G and H, and then H goes to I. So for these rules, in the first node, we notice that A splits into B and C. So our rule, we say that A goes to B, C. Okay, so that just means you take A and you split off B, C into two branches. What about B? Well, B goes to D, E, and F. So you write B as D, E, F. Okay, C, well, C goes to G and H, and finally H goes to I. So what are we reading on this tree? Well, if we take a look at sentence structure in this tree we saw before, well, what we'd read as the final sentence is D, E, F, G, I. Okay, and using our rules, we can actually get there. So if we start with A, we replace A with B and C. We replace B with D, E, and F, and then we still have C at the end. Uh, then we have C going to G and H, so we have D, E, F, G, and H, because C goes to G and H. And finally, H goes to I, and we're left with D, E, F, G, I, and that matches with the bottom parts of the trees here. So we don't have to draw trees for these. We could just think of each line as a rule that rewrites the previous symbol. So if A goes to B, C, if we have A, we replace it with B, C, so on and so forth. Uh, but looking at the tree and talking about the structural relations is very important for syntax. So the first thing we need to do is talk about terminology. So we have branches. Branches are just the lines that split up our nodes. So A goes to B, C, A branches to B, and A branches to C. There is a branch connecting A and B, and a branch connecting A and C. Okay. The second important thing are the nodes. So the nodes are all of our terminals and non-terminals for branches. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I, these are all nodes in our tree. Okay, that's pretty basic terminology. Uh, we also have labels. So labels are the label for the nodes. So the node A is labeled as A. Um, sometimes you'll see that they are multi-labeled. So D might be labeled D, and that might be the... E might be labeled old, F might be labeled man, um, uh, G might be labeled wind, I might be labeled away, something like that. So we can have labels that are words as well. Okay, uh, the root node is the top of our tree. So this is the root node. Terminal nodes are the nodes on the bottom of the tree. So the very bottom branch or the very bottom node at the end of the branches, these are the terminal nodes. So all of these are terminal nodes, D, E, F, G, and I. Non-terminal nodes are everything else, including the root node. Okay, uh, so really these terms aren't too complicated. Uh, the only ones you really need to be familiar with are terms like nodes and terminal nodes and non-terminal nodes. So you know the terminal nodes are things at the very bottom, there's nothing that's below them, and nodes are just the general points on the graph, and then non-terminal nodes are things that are not at the bottom. Okay, this is important for when we talk about movement and constituents a little bit later. Okay, so now that we have the basic terminology done, we can talk about how these nodes relate to each other. So domination, here's a really fancy mathematical definition of domination. X dominates Y if and only if X is higher in the tree and you can trace the path from X down to Y. That's, that's a mouthful. Let's not worry about the mouthful, it's, we're, we're linguists. We translate math into, into pictures and common sense. That's what we do. 
Okay. Let's let's say I want to talk about A. What does A dominate? So let's do the first question. A dominates what? Well, we take a look at A, and we take a look at everything below it. So what is below A? B is below A. Also D, E, and F are below A as well. So uh, A dominates B, it dominates D, it dominates E, it dominates F. Uh, C is also below A, so it dominates C. Uh, G, H, and I are all below A as well, so they dominate G, H, and I. Yeah, so it dominates everything. Why does it dominate everything? Well, because A is the root node, so A is going to dominate all other nodes that are below it. Okay, what about B? What does B dominate? Well, if we take a look down B's branches, it dominates D, E, and F. And that's it. Okay, so B is technically above in a sense it is in a higher tier than g and h but if you just go down all of its branches you can never reach g and h just by going down therefore it doesn't dominate g and h okay what does g dominate well g dominates nothing nothing at all so there's nothing below g that it can dominate g is a terminal node therefore it doesn't dominate anything okay so that's domination the other thing we can talk about is immediate domination. So immediate domination just means that you take a look directly below and that's it. So A, what does A immediately dominates? A immediately dominates, we just take a look down once. So we look at B, we look at C, and then we stop looking. So A immediately dominates B and C. So this is the difference between immediate domination and just domination in general. So domination, we keep looking down as far as we can go. Immediate domination, we look down one and then we stop. Okay. So now that we have some terms, let's talk about constituents in terms of trees. So a constituent is just a set of terminals dominated by some other node. So what do I mean by a set of terminals, nodes dominated by some other node? Okay, let's pick a set of terminal nodes. Let's take the and man. Okay, they are both dominated by an NP. Therefore, they are a constituent. Okay, what about if I took it man and eight? That's a set of terminal nodes dominated by some other node. Well, an NP doesn't dominate them both. A VP doesn't dominate them both. A TP dominates them both. But the problem with the TP is that the TP also dominates the D, this D, and this other N. Therefore, uh, there is no node that only dominates man and eight. Okay, so man and eight is not a constituent because there is no node that dominates only those two. Okay, what about uh, eight, his broccoli? Well, yeah, the VP dominates them all. Therefore, eight his broccoli is a constituent. So really, just to find the constituents, you can pick up a node, and you can see what comes along with it. So if I pick this up, well, I'm going to get the V dangling. I'm going to get the D and the N dangling. So therefore, this set is going to be a constituent. Okay, that's how I see constituents as part of trees. You just grab a node, you pick it up, and you see what dangles along with it. Okay, there's no way to pick up one of these nodes in these trees to just get man and eight on their own. Or to just get the man and his broccoli without eight. It is impossible to pick up a node and just get those four words. Okay, so that's a constituent. So some other terms that are helpful when we talk about uh, these terms, especially when we take a look at X-bar theory, knowing these terms helps a lot with just my communication to you guys and your communication with other people. Uh, mothers, daughters, and sisters. So we say X is a mother of Y if X immediately dominates Y. So A, B, and C. So A is on the very top tier, and then B and C come below it. So A is a mother to B and C, and then B and C are daughters of A. So these are daughters of A, and this is a mother of B and C. Okay, now 
the other important relation here is that B and C are sisters. They're sisters because they share the same mother. So this is just nice family relations, you know, family relations in our trees. We have mothers, we have daughters, we have sisters. Um, we don't have sons, dads, or brothers. It's not in our version of tree relations. If you want them to be in there, you can call them sons, dads, and brothers. Probably doesn't make a difference. Uh, but, you know, this is just typical terminology. We just go with the flow. So sisters, daughters, and mothers. Um, can a node be a daughter and a mother? Yeah, it can. So C is also the mother of G and H. Okay. And then G and H are daughters of C. So the next question, of course, is, well, what about granddaughters and grandmothers? We could talk about grandmothers and granddaughters, but typically we don't. Uh, there's no real need to talk about grandmothers and granddaughters, at least in our version of syntactic theory. Um, we get around it by talking about a new term called C command. And C command is very, very important syntactically. We won't see it for quite a bit of time in this series, but it does get very important for something called binding theory, uh, as well as scope. So uh, when we do get there, they are more advanced topics, but it's an important notion nonetheless. So I'm going to read the definition, and I'm going to make it make sense, because the definition is just it's ridiculously difficult to understand. So x c commands y, if and only if every node dominating x also dominates y, and neither x nor y dominate each other. Okay, I call it the up and over. So we want to ask, what does b c command? Okay, so what we do is we go up one level. We just go up one level. So we go up to a, and then I take a box, and everything below a on the other side is what it c commands. So this is the up and over method. So B, C commands, C, G, H, and I. Okay, so X, so B, C commands C, because every node dominating B also dominates C, and B doesn't dominate C, and C does not dominate B. Okay, so that's the official definition in terms of this tree. Yeah, it's a little rough. So here's the second question. What does, what does G, C command? Well, let's start at G, let's, let's circle G. Let's go up one little bit here, and then let's box everything on the other side. Okay, so G, C commands, H, and I. Okay, uh, what does I, C command? I, well, let's start at I, let's go up one, uh, well, we can't go over because H doesn't have any other daughters. So I C commands nothing else. Another way we could take a look at this, like let's say, what does D C command? Well, up and over, right? So we go up one, and then we box everything else that's underneath B. So D C commands E and F. So another way of looking at this is saying, well, X C commands y so x c commands its sisters and everything underneath its sisters so let's take a look at the first example again with b so b c commands so b c commands its sister which is c and everything below it okay so that's another way of looking at things that might make even a little bit more sense okay so that's all the terminology you need to know about tree structure relations. You need to know about domination. You need to know about your, your labels for nodes, terminal nodes, non-terminal nodes. You need to know about mothers, daughters, and sisters. And you also need to know about C command. So these are the big points from tree structure relations that I'll be talking about and every syntactician that studies generative grammar will be talking about for your entire syntax career. These are all super important concepts and hey, if you're a mathematician going into graph theory, it might help you there too. So, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll answer them the best that I can.